Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today, we're diving into a mind-blowing journey to explore why the Earth before the dinosaurs looked so terribly a world, so alien, harsh, and chaotic it's hard to imagine life taking root, yet it set the stage for everything we know today. Picture the Hadean Eon, 4.6 billion years ago, where Earth was a molten hellscape, rivers of glowing lava carving through blackened crust under a toxic orange sky thick with methane and ammonia. Meteors bombarded the planet relentlessly, each impact forming craters that glowed with molten rock, as seen in the fiery streaks raining down through a turbulent red-black sky. As the planet cooled, torrential rains birthed the first acidic oceans, steaming where they met scorching volcanic rock, with lightning cracking through a dark purple haze. These oceans bubbled with corrosive water under a yellowish-green atmosphere, UV radiation scorching the surface without an ozone layer, creating a hostile world where life seemed impossible. Yet, the cooling crust formed jagged basalt plains, glowing cracks hinting at the fiery chaos beneath, under a smoky red sky where stars peeked through. Fast forward to the Archean Eon, and life began to stir in shallow oceans where stromatolites layered microbial mats glowed faintly green, building calcium carbonate domes under murky water. Deep sea hydrothermal vents spewed superheated minerals, their chimney-like structures cradling shimmering microbial mats, faintly bioluminescent in the dark ocean depths. Zoom in on cyanobacteria, their thread-like forms photosynthesizing and releasing oxygen bubbles, sparking the great oxygenation event that would transform the planet. Above water, barren continents of eroded granite stretched endlessly, scarred by wind and distant volcanic plumes, a desolate landscape devoid of plants or animals. The oxygen surge was catastrophic, wiping out anaerobic microbes, their remains washing ashore as the sky gained faint blue hues, signaling a new era. In the Proterozoic Eon, Earth faced the Snowball Earth events, where ice encased oceans in a stark, frozen wasteland, sunlight glinting off jagged ice sheets under a pale gray sky. Massive glaciers cracked, revealing dark, frigid water below, while volcanoes punched through the ice, their molten lava and ash creating surreal contrasts of fire and frost. As the planet thawed, oceans returned, murky but warming under a brightening sky. Then came the Ediacaran biota, strange soft-bodied creatures like Dickinsonia, their quilted disks swaying in shallow currents, glowing faintly in murky water. Charniodiscus formed fern-like forests on the seafloor, their translucent fronds drifting in slow motion, an alien ecosystem unlike anything today. Spragina and Tribrachidium crawled across muddy bottoms, their bizarre symmetries illuminated by soft light, while UV radiation scorched barren shores above, glowing violet with no plants to shield the cracked rock. Along rocky Ediacaran coastlines, stromatolites stood sentinel as waves lapped, their glistening forms reflecting a dim reddish sun. The atmosphere stabilized, clouds parting to reveal a bluish sky, oxygen rising, setting the stage for the Cambrian explosion. Suddenly, life exploded in diverse vibrant reefs of sponges and archaeocyathids teemed with trilobites, their armored bodies scuttling across sandy seafloors, compound eyes glinting. Anomalocaris, a meter-long predator, hunted with snapping claws, chasing trilobites through murky waters in a tense, bubble-filled pursuit. Cambrian reefs glowed with color, porous structures alive with crawling creatures under clear, oxygen-rich water. Storms battered rocky shores, trilobites clinging to cliffs as lightning lit the chaos, while Pacaea, an early chordate, swam gracefully, its notochord hinting at vertebrate futures. Hallucigenia's spiky form dodged Opabinia's five-eyed gaze, their alien features evoking both awe and unease. Volcanic eruptions still darkened skies, ash falling as trilobites scurried for cover, a reminder of Earth's volatility. Muddy Cambrian shores bore worm tracks at dusk, reddish skies reflecting on rippling water, while arthropods took tentative steps onto land, leaving glistening trails. The terrible Earth was defined by its desolation-barren supercontinents like Gondwana, vast deserts of cracked rock under hazy skies swept by dust storms. Acidic oceans churned corrosive waves, UV light bathed sterile plains in violet glows, and volcanic ash fell like snow blanketing stromatolites in apocalyptic scenes. Toxic gas clouds rolled through valleys, 
dim suns barely piercing the methane haze, while extreme temperature swings froze in scorched rocky landscapes. Ediacaran creatures like Sprigina seemed alien, their segmented forms crawling through murky seas, while Anomalocaris's toothy maw terrified Cambrian waters. Coastal plains, devoid of plants, bore only fossilized trilobite traces, windswept under gray skies. Mass extinctions darkened oceans, volcanic ash choking life as trilobites sank into sediment. Yet, hope emerged oxygen bubbles rose from cyanobacteria, transforming murky waters. Pacaya swam as a vertebrate ancestor. Vibrant Cambrian reefs showcased life's resilience. Stromatolites glowed at sunset. Ediacaran twilight cast haunting beauty, and recovering reefs sprouted after eruptions, sunlight breaking through. Bioluminescent Cambrian creatures lit up reefs at night, arthropods left tracks on muddy shores, and clear skies signaled a life-friendly Earth. Trilobites fossilized in sediment, preserving history as vibrant oceans teemed with diversity. The Cambrian sunrise, golden light on bustling reefs, showed life's triumph over a terrible world, barren lands awaiting future evolution. This ancient earth, harsh and alien, was a crucible for life, forging the path to dinosaurs and beyond. Join us next time to explore more wonders of our planet's past like, share, subscribe our channel,